Hey, how you doing? It's Craig Baker here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through this stylized portrait. I'm going to take it from this to this. All right, a little backstory on this. This image was shot by my sister. Now, here's the edit that she did, and she asked me if I would do my own unique interpretation. So I said, sure, and I'm going to shoot a video and walk her through it. Now, she's a travel photographer, and I'll put a link below in the description box where you can go to this page on Nat Geo and see more of her work. All right, let's get started. So we're in Capture One 11 for this. And this was shot on a Sony A7R II with a Zeiss 35mm f1.4. Now, if we go down to the bottom, you can see this was at ISO 3200, shutter speed 2000 at f4. Now, the only critique I have about this is that I would have shot this at ISO 100 because it was shot outdoors during the day. So you don't really need that boosted uh, ISO. Uh, she shot it in auto, I'm assuming, and it just sort of made these settings for her. That's the only thing I would have done differently. I would have shot this at a lower ISO, so it would have been less noise. I maybe would have shot this at F2 to get a little bit more blurry background. But other than that, I think the composition's great. I think the image is really unique. And I'm going to walk you through how I would edit this image. So let's get started over here, and I'll show you the adjustments that I would make. So the only thing I would do to this, you can see as shot, 5400. I'm going to try this at 52. Just cool it down just a touch. See how that looks. That's pretty good there, and I think I'll take this tint to 1. And then let's just compare that. So to do that in Capture One, you hit the Option key and you hit that backwards arrow. So that's a shot, pretty warm, and then that's what I adjusted it to. So again, that's a shot, a little bit warmer, and then if we go back, that's what I adjusted it to. I think it looks a little more realistic right there, a little bit more realistic looking skin tones. Now let's go to the Exposure tab. Overall, I think the exposure is pretty good. Uh, let me just see what happens if we take it down a bit, because I can always bring it up in Photoshop. Eh, you know, it's pretty good as shot. Let's go brighter. No, I don't like it brighter. I'm just going to go with maybe just very small on the minus. We don't really have that many highlights. I'm going to take it up to about 18, and then I think I'll bring up the shadow detail a little bit in the hat. I think I'll bring it up to about 5. So those are the only adjustments I'm going to make. I think I might just give it a little more clarity. Let me just say like a six, just make his face a little more gravelly. And then we're going to go to Photoshop. So file, and then we're going to say edit with, and here's the settings I would use in Photoshop. It's going to be TIFF, uncompressed, Adobe RGB color space, and you can see Adobe Photoshop 2018, and we're going to edit the variant. And we're going to go to Photoshop. All right, okay, here we are in Photoshop. The first thing I do is duplicate the image, Command J on the Mac. Now we have another layer that we can work on. So the first thing I do is assess the image. And I like this image. I think it probably needs a little bit more sharpness. I'd like the background to be a little more darker to put some emphasis. And then I'm going to try to do a smoke technique. You can see there's some smoke. I'm going to try to make the smoke say Cuba and see if that looks okay. We'll see what happens. It might look a little cheesy, but I don't know. So we're going to go first with the healing brush. You can see it over here, the healing brush tool. I'm going to be using that. I'm going to zoom in, Command plus. And I'm just going to clean up the image a little bit. Now I'm using a Wacom tablet and Tuus Pro. I'm going to sample option right there. And I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. And I'll make the brush a little bit bigger. Again, option on the Mac. I believe it's Alt on the PC. And I'm just going to try to clean up his beret just a tiny bit. So these are just tiny details I just want to tweak. Just so that you're not distracted by any of these little, little details in the image. And it's not really anything crucial, really, these little tweaks. You probably won't even see them. I'm going to zoom in a little more and then just clean things up a little bit. So I think right here, maybe his hairline. I'll clean that up a bit. There's a hair there. I'm probably overdoing it already. I'm going to make this brush a little smaller. Option. Just going to clean up some of these little details here. And uh, these are probably not even going to make a difference in the end scheme of things. But i uh, just going to tweak a few more things here sort of blend in this image. and The goal really is so that you're focused on the portrait, and not distracted by some little details. I'll just get this cleaned up a little bit more. And I think that's pretty good right there. I'll just zoom out a bit. That's probably way too close for this guy. But uh, that's pretty good right there. So one thing I noticed about this image was it wasn't shot with flash. So you notice there's no catch light in his eyes. His eyes are really dark. I think eyes are important in a portrait, so I'm going to try to bring up his eyes a little bit. I'm going to add an artificial catchlight where I think it should be. 
And then I'm going to sharpen this a little bit, maybe saturate it a bit more, and then just darken the background. So that's what we're going to do next. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten the eyes. And I think maybe the easiest way is to add a curves layer. So what we'll do is go here. We'll say curves. Now I'm just going to bring up the brightness here. So now I can see his eyes a little bit better. And then what I'll do is I'll put this on luminosity so that it doesn't affect the color saturation of the image. And then what I'll do is say command I. Now we have a black mask. Now I can paint in with the brush tool over his eyes, just brightening his eyes. So we can see his eyes there. And I'm going to come over here or hit the B key, either or. And then I'm going to just make that smaller with my bracket key. And I think what I'll do is probably take this up a little bit at a time. So maybe 20% for the flow. So you can see my opacity is 100. The flow is 20%. If we go to our brush, we just have a soft brush right there. And then I'll minimize that. And I could see his eyes. I'm just going to bring up the areas where I think they should be a little brighter. Of course, we're going to keep the pupil dark. We're just going to bring up the eye around the pupil. And then what we'll do is we'll add an artificial catch light. So over here too, looks like his eyes might be rather dark normally anyway, but uh, let's just see what we can do to just bring up a little bit of that brightness. Now what you can do to see if the areas are highlighted option and you click on the mask, now you can see the areas that I've worked on. And now what I can do is just sort of tweak those areas a little bit more, make sure that that mask of brightening is even. So I've done that option and then click on it again. And then if we toggle that on and off, you can see his eyes have become brighter. We can always adjust that opacity. That'll be the next step. So what I'll do next is I'm just going to add another layer. And then I want to add a catch light. So I want to try to make this look like it's real. So I'm going to put it at about, I'd say the 12 o'clock position. So the catch light should be between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. I'm going to put it right there at the top of the pupil. And I'll do the same right here, 10 and 2. I'll try to make it in the same position so it looks like it's uniform. Same equal brightness. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that. I'm going to try soft light first, see what that does. And that dimmed it too much. So I'll keep it on normal. But what I'll do is I'll take the opacity down so it looks a little more natural. So I'll take that down to about 60. And then let's just toggle this out. Now once we go back, let's just see if his eyes are any brighter and if they're too bright. They look to me like they might be too bright. So what I'll do is I'll take that down, the curves layer. I'll take that down to about, let's say, 70%. Let's see how that looks. I'll toggle that on and off. Still, I think, a little too bright. We'll go down to about 60%. Toggle that on and off. So we've got a little more brightness in his eyes. Let's toggle the catch light. I think we can go down to about 50 on both. Let's try that. So we'll do 50 there on the curves, and then we'll go to about 50 on the catch light. And then if you go to the bottom layer, the background layer, hit the option key, you can toggle all changes right there. So you can see his eyes have gone from dead to a little bit more life, although I think I'll take them both to 40%. So it's about 43 there and about 43 there. So just subtle changes to his eyes. But I think it looks natural. It doesn't look like it's totally overdone. But I think you can see his eyes again, option on the background a little more life in his eyes. So I'm happy with that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut him out from his background. So I'm going to hit Shift, Option, Command, E, and push everything up to a new layer. And then what I'll do is I'll come up here, and then I'm going to cut him out with the Quick Selection tool out of the background. So I'm going to just zoom in a bit, and we'll refine this. And it should be pretty easy because he's a different color than the background. Now the reason I'm doing this is I want to separate him from the background because I want the emphasis to be more on him so that you're focused on him. It's a portrait and I find the backgrounds a little bright. This is going to happen naturally unless you're shooting say with a flash and then you can bring the background down. But if you're just shooting in natural light, this is going to be something that you're going to have to deal with basically. And so I'm just going to make these quick little adjustments here and then hopefully this looks good and I don't have to tweak it too much. But I'm just sort of going over this, and we can do some refinements as we get more of him cut out. I'm just going to Command minus to zoom out, make sure I get everything, and then we'll go in and we'll take a quick look, make sure everything looks good. All right, so I'm just going to keep going around. So if you have any comments or questions, post them below. I haven't done this image yet, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. 
But I can try to create a realistic looking smoke look with this smoke. And then I think what I'll do is export two different versions. So one with smoke, say in Cuba, and then one just plain. That way I'll just take whatever looks the best. And I'll show you the technique I use for making the smoke look somewhat real. So I'm just going to zoom in, check the outline. It's looking pretty good so far. It's doing a pretty good job. I think there's a little bit here in his beret that we could tweak right there to get that outline a little better. I don't want to go too far and then it'll bleed into the background. But over here on the right side, it looks pretty good. It's up by his ear. You hold the option key to retract some of that mask. So if you go there, it creates sort of a minus and you can go back over areas that you don't want. And you can see his ear. We might have to refine that. I'll show you a technique to do that. And we're just going to tweak this here a little bit more. I know this is like watching paint dry, really, isn't it? But uh, it's not that bad, really. <laughs> Some portraits are easier to, to cut out using this tool. This one's uh, it's turning out to be a little more harder than I thought it would be. But it's still looking okay, though. It's going to get his neck tweaked up here. We'll just look at this plaid shirt. Plaid can be difficult sometimes. You want to make sure that all areas of the plaid are chosen. And we'll just sort of do this here. And we're getting there. We're almost done. The more I get this refined here, the less I'll have to do to kind of tweak it at the end. All right, so the shoulder's looking good. I'm just going to go over to this side, make sure this is cut out properly. That looks pretty good. I'm checking out the outline of his hand and his cigar. That looks pretty good. That looks good there. I just see I could miss in his thumb a bit right there. I just want to make sure I get that. All right, that's looking like it's going to be a pretty clean cutout. I just want to check the beret again. You can see it's not perfect at the top. I'm just going to tweak it a little more. And that's pretty good. Let's just see how this goes. So we're going to go up to Select and Mask. We'll click on that. Now I've got this set for red, so I could really see what's happening here. Now I can just tweak this a little bit here. So what I can do is I'll just go over this a little bit more right here in this area here. Just a tiny bit there. And maybe just a tiny bit right there. And so that should be okay there. A little bit right here on his face. I can make this smaller using my bracket key. Now another thing we can do too is what we'll do is we'll go output new layer with layer mask. We'll say OK. I could tweak just the layer mask. So you can see here we have the white mask. So if I want to bring in an area or take it back, if I hit the D key and then the X key, if you look over to the left, I can toggle between black and white. And what I could do is just disable everything in this photo. Now we can just see the white. I can zoom in command plus and you can see right here we have a part of his neck that looks a little off. So if I hit the X key, I'm on black and make my brush a little smaller. Then what I could do is I could just tweak this back a bit. So I'm on the wrong brush right now. So I need to hit the B key and then we'll be on the right brush. So to deselect, I go command D, screw it up a bit there. I'll make that a little smaller and I could just tweak this gray right here and really get a little bit closer so that uh, it's a more even of a cutout. When we look at his ear, you can see it's a little bit jagged, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take down the back a little bit, so you're probably not going to notice this. X key here to bring the image back in, so if you miss some of the image, you could just hit the X key to bring that back. So I'm just going to do that, but overall, I think it's pretty good for what we're going to do. You'll see that this should work pretty good. All right, so I'm going to bring everything back, and again, an easy way to look at both. Hold the Option key and the Background key, and you can see we've only got the eye adjustment showing. So what I'm going to do next is take a Curves layer. You can see right here, Curves. And then before we brought the, the brightness up, I'm going to bring it down to about there. And then what I'll do is hit the Option key, and I'm going to click on it. And you can see that downwards arrow right there. What that does is it applies that curve darkening to this mask. But you can see it's the opposite. So what I want to do is click on the mask and click Command I. And now you can see how the background got darker and there's more emphasis on him. It's almost like we lit him up and the background's darker. So Command I again. So you can see the darkening layer is applied to him. But if I hit Command I on that mask, Command I, now the background's dark. Now if you think that's too dark, you just go to the curves layer. And then also too, put that on luminosity so we don't affect the color information on the back and then you could just slide that back and forth the opacity so if you just want to bring it down a little bit if you felt like you went too far you could do that with the opacity slider i'm going to go to about 80 percent i'll toggle that on and off so you can see it so that's without the curves layer on the background and that's with 
So you can see he really stands out a little more. So I'm really starting to like the look of this. Now I'm going to merge everything to the top and I'm going to try to make this look a little more gravelly. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go up to filter, other, I'm going to go to high pass and we're going to add a high pass filter to get some added sharpness. So I have it at a radius of about 30 and I'm going to say, okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to soft light. Now you can see, I'm going to toggle this on and off. You can see how this adds some added sharpness, but it also is a little jagged. But in this image, it's kind of working, but I think it's too much. I'm going to take this down to about maybe 50%. And we'll toggle off and on again. You can see it adds that added sharpness. I still think that might be too sharp. I'm going to go to about 40. Now, another thing I'm going to do is add a contrast curve. So we're going to go to curves layer. And what I'll do is I'll bring the darks down a little bit, and then I'll bring the brights up a little bit. So I've created a contrast curve there. Now I can toggle that on and off. You can see that contrast. Now we could go to soft light and see what that looks like. That's way too much contrast, I think. We could also go to vivid light. And you can see how this really affects this. You could also go to hard light. And that's too much too. I'm going to go to soft light. And then I'm going to drag this down to maybe about 20%. And we'll see how that looks. Now we'll toggle that on and off. So you can see how it has that pop of contrast there. And I think that might be too much. I'm going to go with about 15. We've just added some contrast. So let's go back to the background option. And now you can see the differences we've made in this raw image. So I think that's really coming together. I'm starting to really like this. Now the only thing I'm going to do now, I think is I'm going to add a little bit more saturation to this. I want this to be a little bit more like an HDR type image. Easiest thing I think would be to bring this up to about a plus five. And let's have a look at that. I'm going to toggle that off and then we'll toggle that on. You know what? That might be a little too much. I'm just going to tweak it just a bit. I'm going to bring it down to about maybe just plus one. That's about it there. Now, one thing I like to do when I get to this stage is you can add some different colors to different areas. So if we go to selective color, you can see we can just adjust the blacks. So we could put a little blue in the shadows if we want. So if we go to the blacks here and then we're on neutrals, if we go to blacks, if I take the cyan to the right, you'll see how we're kind of adding cyan to the darks. So I like to do that with my images, but not too much. I'll say maybe let's add two to that. Also, you can go with your magenta slider. You can see how that looks a little more purple, looks a little more green. I like to take that to about a plus, plus one, plus two. Then you can take your yellow slider. Again, looking at what colors you want to bring. I think I want to go with maybe like a minus one on that. And then if we just close that out and toggle it on and off, you can see it just added a subtle difference to the darks. Gave it a bit of a bluer. And then if we wanted to, we could take some of the brights and add a little yellow. Another way to do that too is if you go to your levels right here, click on levels, blue channel. Now you can see here, if I take the shadow slider, you can see we're adding a little blue to the shadows. And then if we take the right hand side, the bright side, we're adding a little yellow. So I think what I'll do is 255 is normal. I think I'll go maybe 252 there. And I think I'll add maybe two, ah, three there. Now, if any of this is too much for you, all you have to do is adjust the opacity slider. So I'm going to toggle that on and off again. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to take it back to 80. I always like to kind of do a setting and then just take it back a bit. So I'll put those both at about 80. And then we'll go to the background. So option and then background. So that's the before and then that's the after. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. So that's the raw image right there. And then this is what we have. Now I'm going to do the last thing is the smoke. And so we'll come up here and I'll create a new layer. And what I'm going to do is go to the brush tool. So I'll hit the B key. I'm going to pick a soft brush. So if you come up here, you can see I'm on a soft brush. And then what I'll do is I think I'll just take it in at about maybe 30%. We'll see if that works. And then what we'll probably have to do is add a bit of a blur to this. Now this may or may not work at all. I haven't tested this, so we'll see what happens. I think I want to make this to be about the same size as his smoke strand. So I'll probably go about there. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to write Cuba and try to attach it to this part of the smoke. We'll see what happens. So I'm just going to say Cuba, and then I'm going to attach to that smoke. Now that doesn't look real at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to go to blur. I'm going to go to Gaussian blur and then I'm going to blur that. 
so it looks like it fits with that smoke, which it doesn't at 40. I'm going to try it at 30. We'll see if that looks a little more realistic. It's vaguely there. Let's try 35. Let's see how that looks, and we'll try 25. 35, it's a little bit blurrier. Let's try 25, because if it looks too sharp, it's not going to look right. That's probably too sharp. I'm going to go with 30, and then what we can do is adjust the opacity of that. So I'll say OK, and we'll bring this over. Now, I don't know if that adds anything to the image at all. It's kind of neat. I think I'm going to just fade it out a little bit more. So it looks like it's barely there, and you'd have to kind of look to see it. So I think we'll go with about 70%. Let's just toggle that on and off. Now that's too much. I'm going to toggle that to about maybe 50%. And we just vaguely see that. I might even go 40, and maybe to be subliminal. <laughs> Actually, you won't even see it. I better go about 45. So I've got a little subliminal cuba there. I don't know if that does anything to the image or not. I just thought I'd show you how to do kind of a fake smoke effect. So that's what I would do if it was me. I could probably also do some uh, dodging and burning of this image. I could probably lighten up his eyes a little bit more. But, you know, overall, this is pretty good. I kind of like it the way it is. I just made a few tweaks. Let's have a look one more time at the before and after. The option key, I click on the background. And that was before. And then so just look at his eyes and look at the sharpness and the colors of the image and how the background gets a little more darker and detailed. And then we've got our added cuba there that's just subliminal. And then I could always take that off. It's barely there. I could maybe take it up to 50. Why not? All right. So if you enjoyed this video, just leave a comment below. Also hit that like button. Share this video on the web with your fellow photographers. And if you're not already a subscriber, just click on that subscribe button. Also, if you click on my name, Craig Becta, you'll get to see a listing of all of my videos. I have over 100 free videos. So make sure you check out some of those videos as well. All right, hit that like button, leave a comment below, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and I'll see you in the next video.